Okay, welcome to this fourth tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do if statements in your program. So let's open up Notepad. Okay, we'll just create a new class. Don't want that in the screen. Yeah, class. And we'll call it program. Blue. And everything's going to occur inside the main method. So we'll just set this up. And we'll just put the ending curly braces so you can see what's going on. Okay, so if statements. They are basically a conditional statement that will either run a command if a statement is true, run another command if it's false, or skip something out entirely. So I think the best way of learning if statements is to see an example. So I'm going to do just that. Let's create a variable called lines and that's going to be an integer so int lines equals zero. That's just assigned the value zero to the variable lives. Now the if statement starts with the keyword if and then you've got the open brackets. Okay so inside these brackets there's going to be a conditional statement that's going to be lines equals zero and then open curly brace and curly brace and inside these curly braces that is the code that is going to execute if the statement is true so that will be game over we'll print to the screen if that code is true so let's discuss this conditional statement in more detail Basically, this double equals um, is effectively comparing lives and zero. If lives is equal to zero, then it will print game over to the screen. If it's not equal to zero, it will just skip this out entirely and move on. So let's just say system out print I know after the if statement and we'll go after the if okay so now we can see what's going to happen if lives is equal to zero it will say game over then it will say after the if no matter what if lives does not equal zero i'll just skip this out and say after the if okay so this conditional statement that is just a statement that's going to be true or false so this the operators conditional operators um they can be many things e double equals is one of them that which means equals to it can be greater than greater than symbol so lives is greater than zero that's true less than oh less than there we go <laughs> um less than or equal to just put a little less than an equal sign greater than or equal to and then finally not equal to that's just an exclamation mark and an equal sign now you can also have oh, don't know what happened there. you can also have an else an if else statement now all that is is you add else here and then, and then more curly braces now what that means is that if lives equals zero then it prints out game over if it's not equal to zero it will print out whatever's in this else so system dot out dot print ln you have lives okay so if lives was equal to one say it would print out you have lives because this statement is false it's not equal to zero it's equal to one so it goes to the else which is you have lives and then it prints out after the if because that's just normal code it's after everything so it totally skips out this let's just change that back to zero and i think we'll compile this just to show you so program flow dot java let's navigate to the desktop and Java C program flow dot Java. 
and so that's going to, there we go, flick a while, there we go, that compiles successfully, slow, game over in After Reef, just as what we expected, because lives equals zero, so it runs this, but because this is true, it doesn't run the else, and then after the if, that's past the if statement. Okay, so that makes sense. I hope I've explained that well. Just a little bit more now on this conditional statement. I've told you the conditional operators. You can also have do two more things. That is, you can have more conditions, and you do this by using you can have the and. So if lives equals zero, and health equals oh it's, let's see if another operator does not equal ten then this runs. So basically that means if both of these statements are true then it will run this. Else it will run that. You can always you can also use or which is just a double pipe and that's just shift and then the backslash key gets you that and that's right in the bottom left hand corner of your keyboard um, that means or so if lives is equal to zero or health does not equal zero equal ten even it prints out this otherwise it prints out that so that's just if one or the other is true it will print out this okay so that's pretty simple it's pretty self-explanatory now um, one more thing let's create a new variable and let's call it boolean game over that's going to equal true okay so we created a new boolean variable so what would happen if we did this if game over game over is a boolean it, it's a ki it can either be true or false conditions are either true or false so yeah that would work if game over equals true because if the statement is true, this current statement is just game over, which equals true, so that would run game over. It wouldn't run this, because it's true, obviously, and then we run that. If we chucked an exclamation mark in front of that, however, that would now say, if not true, then it would run that. So now it would run this, you have lives, because of this little exclamation mark. It reverses everything, it just means not in English. So if I change game over to false now, then it would run game over, because not false. So that's a double negative, so that's true. Okay, so if I just get rid of that and change that to, I'll just leave that as false. And then finally, very finally, you can nest if statements. Nesting means you can have one if statement inside another another if statement. Now you can have as many if statements as you like inside each other. You could have five if statements all nested inside each other, although that would be extremely complex. For example, if lives equals zero or health is less than zero. Obviously I haven't got the lives and health variable, this is just an example. There we go. So now as you can see this if statement is nested and that just acts the same as an ordinary if statement. If game over is true, which it's not in this case, so that would just be skipped anyway, but if it was true then it would run this. If if that was both false, then it would skip and move on to this because it wouldn't move if this statement was false then it wouldn't go to this else because this else is for this if if I could chuck in an else here and then we've got a thing but I don't need to because I don't want to <laughs> so you can mix and match you don't have to if you have an if and then an else you don't inside that if you don't have to have an if and an else Likewise, if you have a boolean, you can have conditional statements here, you can have multiple conditional statements, you can have single conditional statements like that, you can chuck ifs inside here, if time is greater.
greater than less than 100 blah 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 etc else yeah you get the idea okay so that's that's if statements um yeah great that's going to add a totally new dimension to your program because you can now just do things depending on variables so your program can adapt to different things that's the best way of saying it then so now I would recommend you just mess around with if statements for a while create a couple of programs like I don't know program that has a variable called age you just type in your age like I don't know 20 I don't know and then it tells you what year of school you're in or, or even no, that that would take a lot of ifs. It tells you what stage of school you're in, like for all you Americans, high school, college, university, or for us English people, uh, primary school, secondary school, college, university. So yeah, that would be good. So like if age is greater than 18 and less than 21, prints out university. If it's greater than 21, prints out you should be working or something like that I don't know so just have fun don't be afraid to try out new things um, until we meet next time where I will explain object oriented programs